Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar, and I'm the senior pastor at Alpha Lions Dead Ministries in Derry, Pennsylvania. I'm just an old football player that has been saved by grace. I played several years with the New England Patriots and with the Detroit Lions. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you into one of our services. Hi, I'd like to thank you for tuning in to view our service today. I'm Pastor Ronald Kozar, Senior Pastor of Alpha Lions Den Ministries, and following you're going to see an information page. And I'll just simply be honest with you, we could not do what we do without your financial support. So we totally rely upon you, so I just want to take this opportunity to thank you in advance for all your gifts and donations. So please view our information page, and I look forward to seeing you real soon. God bless. Well, look, we're in Romans 1. We're talking about the, the power of God. See, people think the power of God is a bunch of bells and whistles and all the things that we may see happen in certain churches, but the power of God is the gospel. The gospel, it is the power of God. Because listen, there is nothing, nothing more powerful than a transformed life. You cannot, you cannot change, you cannot take a corruptible sinner. You cannot take a carnal mind. And you can never transform that. We have every program in the world today trying to transform people. But then uh, the uh, obituates and uh, the uh, heroin epidemic that's out there in the world today is unlike any other time. Opioid in the history of the world. It's a crying shame to hear what people have done. I mean, have their children locked in a bedroom and they're out there doing heroin and the babies starve to death because the parents wouldn't even feed them. Have a lady shoot up and she rolls over and suffocates her child to death. See, these, these are not natural things that happen. Women do not do that to their children. I mean, I even saw the, the two bald eagles that they're filming now, how, the, how the, the one, the female, she was sitting on her egg and the, and the male was sitting there looking and they were just so concerned about even a deer in the woods or animals in the woods. I mean, you see how they're concerned about their children. It's not even natural to see what's happening in the world today. There's such a spirit of perversion and just evilness. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to wave the flags and sound the trumpet and give out a warning for what's happening in the earth. But see, the Bible talks about a great falling away. And I talk to people and pastors all over the country, and you hear of churches that used to be 500-member churches. Now they have 100. You hear about those that were 100. Now they have 20. I mean, churches are just hanging on by a thread. That's why we really have to do every single thing that we can do to support the ministry that we're a part of. So we're in Romans 1, Romans 1, verse 16. It starts out by saying this. It says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God. The gospel of Christ is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Do you got that? I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and then also for the Gentile. For in it the righteousness of God is being revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation. Listen, there is nothing, nothing on this earth today that can transform a carnal person beside the gospel of Christ. Nothing can transform that being that was once an old heathen, that was once an old sinner, that would just 
know the ways of the flesh and be led by our flesh. There's nothing that can set us apart from that except the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's it. There's nothing else. No other program, no other teaching, no other drugs. Nothing will separate you from that body of sin and death, the Bible says. We live in a tent that's full of just sin and death. Paul, listen to this. Paul, the greatest apostle, apostle ever lived. This is what he said. He said, the very thing that I do not want to do, that's what I end up doing. And the things that I want to do, I can't do. So he said, who is going to deliver me from this body of sin and death? So this is the struggle that we have within our own self. If we are not plugged into the Word of God, and if we are not sanctified and separate, we preached on Wednesday night. If you were not here, you missed it. You need to go to YouTube and just type in my name, Ronald Kozer, K-O-S-O-R. Type that in and pull up some of the sermons. But we talked about baptism. Baptism is very, very important because it is an external sign of an internal change. Are you with me? It is a decision that you decide to do to lay your old body down, that old person. You put them down under that water, and by your faith, a new person, a new creation comes up out of that water. Now listen, the last baptism we did, I think we had 58 people we baptized. And if you were baptized in that baptism and you're here this morning, raise your hand. So we probably have 10. We probably have 10 out of the 58 that were here. But I watched from that time because our ministry is such an outreach ministry. You'll see an influx of people come into our ministry. And then you'll see a battle go on for the souls and of, of men and women, and you'll watch people fall by the wayside. We have an obligation, first of all, to preach the gospel of Christ, but to bring people into the church. The church is like the hospital. See, people think that everybody comes to church, they're all healthy and they don't need anything. No, the people that come to church are the ones that need help. It's a spiritual hospital. Just I'll use JP as an example because I love JP, but I saw him yesterday and he goes, hey, I'm going to be at church tomorrow. Remember? And I say, JP, I'll be there. I even think even Adam texted me, no, Eugene did. He said, I'll be at church tomorrow. I said, well, I know I'll be there. And, and this person, the I, is the only person that I'm accountable for. I told Vern Ressler, 13 years ago that I would be here. Now Vern's done going. He went off into heaven. But we're still here preaching. We're carrying the cross. Why? Because I said I would. Other people come and go. But those that are committed to the cause. When you get tied into a ministry like ours, you'll see people come and go. Because that's what we do. We're out there in the highways and the byways. We're bringing them in and we're trying to help them become transformed and there is a battle. The Bible says in Ephesians 6 that we don't battle against flesh and blood. So you're not battling against your husband. You're not battling against your wife. You're not battling against the boss. It's not your boyfriend or your girlfriend or the, the pretty little dogs or the cats or all those things that upset us. It's not the hot water tank. It's not our cars breaking down. It's not those things. It's not that stuff. The stuff and the things are only used by the devil to try to influence us in a negative way. Now, when we're blessed by God, those things are a blessing in our life if we use them as a blessing. I've seen people get financial blessing from God and go out and buy heroin with it. I've actually seen people in our church that was hurting financially that we blessed with money and you never see them again. Never. Gone. 
Just be in the church for five years, totally transformed, serving God, doing whatever they're doing. You bless them with money and you never see them again. There is a battle raging right now because the time is short. If you turn on your television now, it's just not about Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. Trump was chosen by God to be the president. Now, how do we know that? Because he's the one in office, and God is the one who appoints kings. So even when the abomination was in there, we had to say, okay, he was in there appointed by God for a certain period. Verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness. You know what I see in the world today? I see this battle raging every single day. I mean, I see people picketing for bad things and I preached about it two weeks ago and then yesterday they had a huge march for pro-life. It was all over the country. It was a phenomenal thing. I said, I, I, I mean, we're busy, but I like to support that kind of stuff. I mean, I like to know when that stuff's going on. I had no idea what was going on. They were all over the streets of Pittsburgh. They were in so many cities. It was a phenomenal display of support for men and women that believed in the, the right to life. From birth to death, that you should not take a life. How can we think that, that murdering a baby at four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months is not preventing a life. That's how perverted the carnal mind becomes. Listen, don't think, don't ever think that you can outsmart the devil. You'll never outsmart. Two big parts of our outreach are represented here. First of all, on the left is our His Food Ministry truck. We send this truck out every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday to pick up food and we do a free food giveaway at our church. Once again, that's every single Monday, Thursday, and Saturday. And then on the right is our Alpha Lion's Den Ministry church bus where we pick up people and bring them to our church on Wednesday and Sunday. Because I am telling you, he's been at this a long time. That carnal mind cannot comprehend the things of the kingdom. And sin is what separates us from God. So once we're separated from God, we do the things that are not even natural. You'll do things that you never thought you would do. Who would ever think a mother would lock her two children in a bedroom and do heroin in the next room and the kids starve to death? Dogs don't do that. Animals in the wild do not do that. They take care of their offspring. It shows you that if it's not natural, it's spiritual. There is a problem there. Who would think that that is right? <laughs> For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. That's where the wrath of God comes from. People think on this earth, listen, you think you get away with, with, with sin and living the way you want to live? No, there's ramifications, there's reper repercussions for the way we live. But listen, we got the right to ask for forgiveness. And are we forgiven? Yes. But is there still ramifications? Yes. Until you live your life accordingly, you got to be found trustworthy. You got to prove that you are faithful. You need to prove that you're trustworthy. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who listen, who suppress the truth. How do people suppress the truth? In unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen being stood, 
being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Listen, nobody has an excuse. Last Sunday we talked about excuses. You know what I say an excuse is? Does anybody know? It, an excuse is an accepted reason for failure. An excuse is an accepted reason for your failure. You're better off not even to make an excuse. You're better off just to change your way to start turning and living in the realm of what God wants you to live. Because listen, my friend, Jesus said he came that they would have life and have life more abundantly. This is the life that Jesus has for you. I watch people that are faithful in ministry. I watch people who come or submitted and committed to ministry. And I watch how God blesses their lives. Even they don't know sometimes how much they're blessed. I've done this for 42 years in ministry. I watch the people that are faithful to the kingdom of God. God will bless you. Listen, in this life and in the life to come. Press down, shaken together, and running over shall men give into your bosom. How does God give? People always say, oh, God's going to do this, God's going to do that. No, God does it through men. Listen, we waited 12 years for that apartment over there to be finished, the work to be done. Until God sent Adam, it was not done. Can anybody argue that with me? No. Did we pray? Yes. Did we fast? Yes. Did we have the money? Yes. Did the apartment stay just exactly as the first day I walked in here over 12 years ago for 12 years? 12 years. Anybody that breathed could have went over there and grabbed a hammer and started doing something. Do you know how many people's come through this ministry in, in 12 years? A lot. Thousands and thousands of people have come and gone. And I'm an overseer. So I watch. And until God sends the person who is appointed to come, it will never get done. That's the way it is in the kingdom. Because there is a battle. Don't you think the adversary knows what we do in those apartments and how people are blessed and how we bring people in? And do, do we wish every single one of them would come to church? Eugene's here this morning. I said, listen, they're right across the parking lot. I mean, right 100 yards across the parking lot. Then we give them a free lunch. And listen, we even give them a to-go box. We even drag them across the parking lot if they went driven across the parking lot. See, my friend, it is not natural. It is supernatural. Because the devil knows when he can keep anybody out of the church, especially a church that's preaching the truth. That's his number one goal. Just like our number one goal would be to stay in church. That's what our number one goal got to be. Listen, my friend, I'm telling you something. If you forget anything I ever preach or teach, the one thing that you should do is stay in church. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what you think. But as soon as you know that God has sent you to a ministry, that is your only hope in life. Because through that realm and through that avenue, I can show you in the Word of God that that is how God will bless you. God even supplies seed to the sower. 
God takes care of us. Why? So we can take care of his kingdom. That's how the kingdom works. We got to take care of the household of God. They're without excuse, verse 21, because, they, because although they knew God, listen, these are people that knew God, they did not glorify Him as God. So listen, there are people that think they know God and they have a vain imagination of what God is, but they really don't know God and they don't glorify Him as God. Nor were they thankful, but they became futile in their own thoughts. Listen, I'm telling you this. The one thing that I've learned in my 42 years of service to God is I'm thankful. Because when you get your eyes put on your own little I, me, and myself, and I, little, me, my world, you can become like a spoiled little brat. And I don't care how bad things are. I'll wake up in the morning, and, and Deborah knows this. I mean, not even Coco knows. My dog knows. When I go in the shower, I get up, I got my own routine, I go in my shower. That's the time, me and the Lord. And I've been that way as long as I can remember. And that's how I start my day off. Because I want to be able to commit myself to God. And at times, even when times are tough. Listen, when, when, when all the hell is coming against me, I thank God that I can see. Because I lost my sight. Then I thank God that I can walk. Then I thank God that my heart's beating properly because I almost died from that for years because the devil went, listen, if you don't know it, the devil hates me. And he hates you. That's why he manipulates and twists and tries to confuse your life and mess your life up. Because he don't want you to have peace in the kingdom of God. So I have learned to be thankful in all things. To be anxious for nothing, Philippians 4, 7, to be anxious for nothing, but through all things, through prayer and thanksgiving, through prayer with thanksgiving. So there's a prayer. Listen, most people pray to God. You, I mean, could you imagine how God hears this? There is the supreme creator of the universe. He could do anything for you in one second. And usually the only thing that people come to God for is they ask him for stuff. You'd be better off thanking God. You would be better off praising God and thanking him for everything that he's done for you. I don't care if it's been one grape in 10 years. I don't care if you don't even like grapes. Thank him for something. And be thankful because that's an attitude in your heart that causes you to find favor with God. You're never going to prove your righteousness to God. Nothing trumps favor, grace, and mercy right now. It's being thankful. That's what causes God to open up the windows of heaven. It's his favor. So listen, that though they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were even thankful. But they became futile. Where? They became futile, listen to this, in their own thoughts. Listen, my friend, your battle is in your brain. The battle is in your brain. It is your soul. It is your mind, your emotions, and your will. When you begin to take authority over your own thoughts, that's where your freedom becomes. But no, listen, if you're a carnal man or you're a carnal woman with a carnal mind, you're done. You'll never be set free. I was at the food ministry yesterday and somebody came in and they said, oh, you know, this weather. I said, what do you mean? It's 55 degrees outside and sunny. Adam's running around, taking care of 50 things. Carol's running around, the plow truck's flying around. I mean, I'm all happy. Oh, this stupid weather. I'm like, what do you mean? It's
6.55 and sunny. Well, yeah, in February. And, well, everybody's going to get sick now. I said, no, no, oh, oh wait a second. This is another aspect of our outreach. We have the Dairy Junior High School that our ministry purchased. And what we did is we put apartments, we refurbished apartments across the top of this building that we rent out to families. So this is another very large part of our ministry. I'm not getting sick. And she looked at me like, what? I said, I'm serious, I'm not getting sick. I said, you're sick, huh? She goes, yeah. I said, do you always get sick? She goes, yeah. I said, when the weather changes like this, you always get sick, huh? Yeah. Y you just bring that on yourself. Every year I catch a cold. Well, I said, don't catch the cold. The power of life and death is found in our tongues. So when it says right here, listen, First of all, we're to be thankful, but they became futile in their where? In their mind, in their thoughts. And then listen, here's what happens after your mind is messed up. But they became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were then darkened. Hello, do you see that process? It starts up, first of all, they don't recognize God as God. They don't give thanks to God. Are you with me? Then the battle is in your mind. And when you lose it in your mind and you don't take every thought captive, it falls into your heart. Then your heart becomes darkened. And then we, just like pigs, go back to the mire that God once delivered us from. I've seen people delivered from per perversion and other religions and just filth. And, per and the Bible says we're just like a pig that returns back to its mud or a dog that returns back and eats its own vomit. We're worse than animals. People become worse than animals. I think, listen, animals act better than that. How far have we fallen? But listen, here's how they get messed up. All of them start this way. Oh, there's nothing wrong with me. Oh, this is okay. Oh, I can just have one. Oh, what's it gonna hurt? Professing to be wise, professing to be wise, they became like God. No. It says, professing to be wise, they became fools. They became fools. And they changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like incorruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. So here's what God did. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. In the lust of what? Their own hearts. And what happened? So they dishonored their own bodies among themselves. So, so listen, folks. I mean, you need to be with me this morning or wherever you're at or watching this, and you need to be learning this process. Because this process will set you free. First of all, you better be praying and giving thanks to God. You need to acknowledge Him as God with thanksgiving for everything in your life because God causes all things to work together for the good. For them that love Him and who are the called according to His purpose, Romans 8, 28. Then we need to learn how to take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. When we do that, you become liberated in your mind, which is your, your mind is, your soul is your mind, emotions, and your will. This is where most people are defeated. It's in their soul. It's their mind, emotions, and will. 
Listen, your spirit can be saved if you really believe in Jesus and if you're committed unto him. But there's a lot of people that are saved, but their life is messed up. This is why the pastoral move, the pastors teaching that have never got the church to the next levels, they get people saved, and then they're saved. And they sit in a pew, and their lives are all going to hell, and they're having these battles that they're having when they're living, and they're all disgusted. You need to learn how to be victorious, to be an overcomer. Amen. So, God gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever and ever. Amen. For this reason, for this reason, God gave them up to vile passions. You'll be overcome. For even the woman exchanged the natural use for what is good against nature. Likewise, also, even the men leaving the natural use of the woman, they burned in their lust one for the other, men with men committing what is shameful. Now listen, this is homosexuality and lesbianism. And these were people that once knew God. How can people that once knew God fall into this position? They were the same as you and I. Well, maybe close. But they knew Jesus. They knew God at one time. But see, it starts with that thought. And like I say in Matthew 24, it says, Just in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Listen, Noah, there is no way Noah experienced what we experience. Noah didn't have heroin. Noah didn't have the internet. Noah didn't have Facebook or Twitter or all the critters that we have. Noah was not confronted with the things that we're confronted with, I promise you that. The things that we have access to by one touch of a button are more than what Noah could have seen in his whole life. It's at our fingertips. And if you are not submitted and committed to God, you'll be consumed. I've watched it happen. I got 42 years in this. I've watched many people get snuffed out. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, in their thoughts, listen, you need to learn how to retain God in your thoughts, in your soul, because that's where everything begins. You can be saved, but if you don't know how to take every thought captive, you're living a defeated life. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which are not even natural. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy. They were murderers. They created strife. They were deceitful. They were evil-minded. These people were whispers. They were backbiters. They were haters of God. Violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Do you see that? You watch the news today, I'm telling you, people are inventors of evil things. I mean, just on the news, it's disgusting. They're disobedient to their parents, physical and spiritual. They're undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Listen, where's forgiveness today? Where's mercy today? 
who knowing the righteous judgment of God that those who practice, practice such things are deserving of death. Not only do they do the same, but they also approve of those who practice them. Therefore, you are inexcusable, O oh man, whoever you are to judge, for in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself, for, for you who judge practice the same things. But we know that the judgment of God is in according to truth against those who practice such things. Now look, last Sunday we talked about Luke 14. Luke 14, and we talked about these excuses. I only have so much time today. Now, there was different excuses. Now, it says in Luke 14, verse 16, listen to this. A certain man gave a great supper and invited many, and his servants, his servants at supper time, and invited many, and sent his servant at supper time to say to those who were invited, Come, for all things are now ready. That's where we are now. Everything's ready. But they all, with one accord, began to make excuses. Listen, an excuse is an accepted reason for failure. It's the thing that we say or do to try to justify our way of life where we make our own choices. The first said to him, hey, wait a second, I have a piece of ground and I must go and see it, so I ask, so I ask you to have me excused. So they were excused from the kingdom. Another said, I have five oxen, and I'm going to test them. I ask you that you excuse me. Still another said, I married a wife, and therefore I have come. I cannot come. So that servant came and reported the things to the master. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and into the cities and bring them in here. Bring the poor, bring the maimed, bring the lame, bring the blind. And the servant said, Master, it is done as you commanded, and still there is room. Then the master said to the servant, Go into your, the highways and even the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Then he says in verse 26, listen to this. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife, even children, brothers and sisters, Yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now listen, you need to understand the Bible. Because it's not preaching and teaching us to hate our husband or our wife or our brother or sister or mother or father. It's saying that you cannot come and follow him. So in other words, your first step is, is to seek ye first the kingdom of God. What you view right here is our parsonage. We've rented out this parsonage to families for 15 years. And then right to the right of the parsonage, you will be able to view our church. But as I said, all these are parts of our ministry. We're a multifaceted ministry. And I really wanna share that with you being the senior pastor of Alpha Lions Den Ministry. So you know really what our ministry represents. You must love the Lord more than everyone who I just listed. Once you do that, then the Bible has instructions on how you are to have a relationship with your parents and with your wife or with your husband or with your relatives or how Jesus then gives you instruction. But you've got to get the first base first. Because a lot of times the way people live controls the way and how you can live with them or live without them. You understand? Now let's go to 2 Corinthians. This is what I was going to preach this morning. 2 Corinthians. So we're finally getting to my message. Acts, Romans, Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. I think that's where I was. 2 Corinthians, oh yeah, listen to this. This is what I was going to preach today. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, this is very important. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians.
Corinthians 4 says this. Therefore, since we have this ministry, every one of us should have a ministry. Every one of us should know, hey, God has sent me to do this. This is what I want to do to build God's kingdom. Listen, some people might be able to plow the lots. No, some people may be able to clean the sidewalk. Some people may be able to run a food ministry. Some people may be able to finish off an apartment. Some people may be able to provide finances to the church. Some people might be able to vacuum the carpet. I mean, every single thing that we do, that when God places you in the ministry, okay, we got to people, know people how to do worship. We need to have a guy in the back that knows how to do the sound. We need to have different people that know how to do different things. That's what causes a ministry to grow. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, listen to this, we do not lose heart. We do not lose heart. The only thing we can do now is commit ourselves to the ways of the kingdom. Okay, I told you when, when I first came here, I asked God, and that's what God told me. You get people to commit to Sunday service, services, and if they give 10%, we can build an army of people, of men and women that we can, I mean, just think of the things that we can do. And that's what God told us to do. He said, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things. Repent, turn away, renounce. You don't want to have nothing to do with the hidden things. Renounce the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness or handling the word of God, listen, deceitfully. So does that mean that there are people out there that handle the word of God deceitfully? Absolutely there is. Especially in the days that we're living in. You need to know how to rightly divide the word of truth. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. The gospel is only veiled to those who are perishing. Listen, there are people out there boycotting now that killing a baby is wonderful. I mean, what could they be thinking? To have films of little children in women's wombs trying to push the scissors away and the tweezers away of little children in there trying to live and people murdering them. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds, oh, there we go again. That's our soul, that's your soul. It's your mind, your emotions, and your will. That's where the battle starts. If you could sit down and address somebody and say, listen, you need to take that thought right there captive. Because it all, listen, I don't care who you are. The devil doesn't come in with a bolt with a gun and put it to your head and say, do this or do that. He, it, just don't do it that way. The battle is in our mind. It's in our soul. It is our mind, emotions, and our will. And that is what affects our heart, the Bible says, which is the real spirit of the man. It doesn't mean just a ba-boom, ba-boom, ba-boom physical heart. It means the true spirit of the man, the life source of the man, the spirit. But even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not Listen, we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord. This is what we preach. Not ourselves, but Christ Jesus as Lord. 
Listen, this big thing about illegal immigrants and all those things, here's another thing. Who in their right mind would want illegal immigrants to come into a country and butcher the country just like they're doing in Germany, France, and Syria right now? Tens of thousands of them were permitted to come into their borders so we can learn by what they're experiencing now. See, it is not natural, which means it's spiritual. It is setting us on the course. It is setting the stage for the last days. Because we're saying, oh, look at them over there. They're shooting people. They're cutting people's heads off. Every single day they're in the streets doing this. Oh, we want more of that, so let's let, you know, 200,000 of them into our country. How insane is that kind of thinking? Then you got a president that wants to keep them out, and then all the people, or at least half the people, are out there protesting and fighting that they want our people to be murdered and killed. It's stupid. You're right, Carol. So verse 7. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. But here's what we have. Listen. But we have this treasure. It's like a hidden treasure. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm teaching you this morning and showing you, first of all, you need to take every thought captive. That this is the battleground. Your mind is the battlefield. If you don't take control of it in your soul, which is your mind, emotions, and will, it will drop into your heart, which is your spirit. When you can't control your spiritual man, you will have a manifestation which comes out of this flesh bag. That's you. You're a flesh bag. That's what I call you. We're all just big flesh bags. Some bigger than others. I'm a big flesh bag. Some of you are little flesh bags. But that's where the manifestation comes out of. You see this happen, that's happened, this happened. It'll manifest eventually out of our flesh. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Why? That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. See, this is the witness that we are to people. They say, hey, wait a second. I used to see him down at the bar. I used to see him doing this. I used to see her doing that. I used to see them do this. I saw the way they used to act. Now look what they're doing. That is the power of God. It's not an introverted church that just sits in a pew for 40 years and you go, how do you know you're saved? And they go, oh, just because I believe in Jesus. Listen, the devils believe in Jesus. The demons believe in Jesus. But it's what we do with that belief. It takes us to the next level in the kingdom. God does, doesn't want a, a pew warmer. We could just buy a bunch of heat pads and set them on the seats and do the same thing. Heat pads will heat the seats just the same as people do. They just sit there. They come in on Sunday and sit there. Listen, here's the way every one of us have lived at one time or another. Wake up, because I'm closing with this. Listen, we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. So you're pressed on every side, but you're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're struck down. At, at times you even fall down, but you got to get back up. He says we're struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Christ also may be manifest, how? In our bodies. Now, there's a word for you. That we carry about the dying of Jesus in our bodies. We carry about the dying of Jesus. Why? That the life of Christ may be seen through our resurrected bodies. 
it goes back to that baptism thing. Because really, when you're baptized and you go under that water, you're making a proclamation externally that, listen, I'm putting myself under. I'm dead. The old me's dead. The only way I'm coming up is because I'm a new resurrected person and I'm going to live differently. Listen, I remember when we come up, what was that baptism you did, Greg? Seven, dunk, what was that? Jordan. The Jordan baptism. Well, we said, okay, there were certain people that wanted this and that, and then people was fighting about that and arguing about this and how many times they'd be dumped and this and that. I'm like, the end result is what matters. The end result in regards to how, if you go under the water once, twice, three, four, five, six, seven, it doesn't, it, it does, but it doesn't. It just shows the attitude of the person's heart. I said, don't matter if you want to go over one, twice, two, three. If it, you know, it's what's in your heart. So listen, the caring about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus, the life of Jesus also may be manifest in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death. Now that don't even make sense. But the Bible tells us for those that try to save their life, they'll lose it. But those that lose their life for Christ's sake, they'll find it. That's how I find my life. I was always trying to get this and get that, build this and do that. I finally found peace and found my life when I lost everything for Jesus. It works. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Christ also may be manifest. How? In our mortal flesh. Think about that. The life of the resurrected Christ can be made manifest. How? Through your mortal bodies. So that death is working in us, but life in you. I have to stop there. But listen. <clears throat> I'm telling you, this has been a lesson for you this morning. This is a way that you can live and be an overcomer. You must be able to take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. That is your soul, your mind, emotions, and your will. And if you do not control it there, what it will eventually do is it will drop into your heart, not your ba -ba 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 -ba. It drops into your spirit. Then it becomes a, a piece of you. Then eventually it will manifest itself out in the things that you do in your body where there's a manifestation of it. So if the Bible teaches us in Galatians 6, 7, it says, Be not deceived, for God is not mocked or made fun of. For whatsoever a man sows, this he shall reap. If we sow according to the flesh, from the flesh will reap destruction. If we sow according to the Spirit, from the Spirit we will reap everlasting life. So just as though it happens in a bad sense, you need to plant good seed, and then you will begin to see a good harvest. Stuff will come to you, I mean, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. It will be a change in your life. I've seen it happen. 42 years. I've watched it happen in people's lives. And this is what we want for you. We want you to have that abundant life. Father, in the blessed name of your son Jesus, we come once again, Lord, and we give you thanks for this message. Holy Spirit, I thank you for being the teacher. I pray that you would write this word upon our hearts that we would not sin against thee. I thank you, Lord, for every man, woman, and child that you have called to be a part of this ministry. I pray for peace upon them this morning. I pray for strength. I pray that they would take every thought captive into the obedience of Christ. Use us, Lord. Use us to build your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.
Hi, my name is Pastor Ronald Kozar, and right now I've been pastoring a church in Derry, Pennsylvania for approximately 16 years. I have known Jesus as my Lord and Savior for 41 years. And during this time, God has given me a burden for the body of Christ. Three specific things is spiritually, physically, and financially. I'm going to share with you a story that is so powerful and life-changing regarding some of the things that have happened in my life in the last two years. About two years ago, I was having a problem with my vision. I didn't tell anybody, but I was going through this difficulty of seeing and just struggling with this. And I've watched so many people struggle in the church with different things physically. And I understand this, if you're going through a physical problem, it's gonna affect you spiritually. So I have a burden, I have a burden for the body of Christ. So today's show is gonna be able to help you help others physically, which will also help them spiritually. So I, I have this burden to get back to, my, back to my story. And I'm struggling with this as, as so many other people struggle. And I look at people in the body of Christ who struggle with being overweight who struggle with diabetes, who struggle with macular degeneration, who struggle with arthritis, which gets into our back and our hips and our knees, and all these issues that I watch people in the body of Christ struggle with. And here I was, a former NFL football player, pastoring a church. Now everybody would have thought that I had my life all together. But as I said, two years ago, two years ago, almost to the day, I began to lose my sight. And I went through this struggle of really trusting God. As I, as I was, my vision was declining, I knew that God spoke to me one day and he said that I will send you an answer. And sometimes that's all you have and that's all you need is a word from God. And God has transformed my life. Today you're gonna hear of a story that is mind-boggling how God can bring healing into your physical body through natural, holistic products. God has really blessed a man by the name of Noel Turner from New Zealand with these products. And I heard about them. And that's what you're going to hear on, on this show. It's an it's a all-natural way to bring health and restoration to your physical body. So I was in our church. I struggled with this for about six months by myself. I didn't tell anybody. And I was in the bottom of our basement helping my wife, Deborah with the food ministry. And I thought I ha had something in my left eye. And when I closed my left eye and I looked out of my right eye, I was blind. I couldn't see anything. And it really scared me. So they rushed me to, the, to an eye specialist. And then that eye specialist said that they had to take me to an optometrist. Now he looked at me and he told me that I had this thing happen in my eye, which is an occlusion. Now an occlusion is totally different from macular degeneration because an occlusion is like a stroke inside your eyeball. So all my veins had ruptured. There was a, a, an explosion inside my eye. And thank God that it did not go out the back of my eye because it probably would have killed me from a brain aneurysm but my eye was strong enough to hold the fluids. But what it did is it pushed the pupil out the front of my eye, causing me to go blind, not to see. So the only thing that I found out is I had to, I had to see a doctor, and the doctor told me the only way to, to, to be able to treat this is I had to get a shot in my eye once a month for 16 months. I had to go in once a month and get a shot in my eye. And, and the whole time, I just prayed about an answer. I said, God, you said that you were going to send me an answer. And just like many of you today, you struggle physically, and that affects you spiritually. So if you're struggling with overweight, being diabetic or diabetes, macular degeneration, or if you have arthritic issues, bad back, hips, knees, anything like that, inflammation is the number one cause to all these issues. So we have the answer today. And I want to bring you some good news. But listen, you need to be sick and tired of being sick and tired. And when you, when you need change, when you want change, when you're sick and tired of that, God will send you the answer. 
So call some friends, tell them to tune in. It's going to be a great show. Hi, I'm Pastor Ronald Kozor, and you just got done watching a video that we had put together about a year ago now. And this is just a brief summary and a testimony. I could not wait to come back and share this with you to prove the product of Freezor. Because let's face it, the people that don't try it, they do not believe that it works. But me, firsthand experience, I know this, a person with an experience is never at the mercy of a person who has an argument. So what you just heard on that brief little testimony clip was my beginning stages of experimenting with the Freezor product. And now today, when we're making this video for you, is over one year later. Now, if we go back a year ago, when, when you just saw the video that we put together, I was going blind in this eye, and I just began to receive my sight. My knees were coming back. Everybody thought, well, that could be working, and it could not be working. Well, now it's been over a year. I just went to my eye doctor, and they tested my eyes again. My vision is actually 2016. There is no fluid in my eye whatsoever. My eye has healed back 100%. Now, previous to my, to my beginnings with the Freezor product, my eye was filling up with blood. I was hemorrhaging with inside my eyeball. And I actually have the scans of every single month for 16 long months. I had received a shot in my eye. And I started to take the Freezor product and, and honestly, I am telling you, it healed my eyes up. It's been over one year now, and I have 2016 vision, perfect vision, no more shots, thank you, Jesus. My knees, my right knee was absolutely shot. I had no cartilage in my leg whatsoever. My left leg was going. Here we are one year later, taking a Freezor product. I take two Omegas every morning, and two every night, two a stacks of thin every morning and two at night. And I also take the weight loss shakes. So listen, if you're having problem with your knees or any type of arthritis, one year later, I ride the bike now three days a week, five miles every single time. I go in and work out for my legs twice a week. And uh, things are absolutely incredible. So if you're struggling with weight loss, that's number one. I take the, the weight loss protein. Uh, shakes that Freezor has. I actually started out taking the children's shake. So they have two of those um, shakes. One is chocolate, one is vanilla. You can switch them back and forth. That's what I started to lose weight. Now, I lost 45 pounds, 45 pounds by taking the, the weight loss, just the shakes. And then off of the other two products that I said, the Omega-3 and the Astaxanthin, I've got my eyesight back, so it helps you with weight loss. If you're diabetic, we've helped so many people that, are, that have diabetes or struggling that are diabetics. I really encourage you to try it. The next thing is, is those that struggle with arthritis, neck, back, or knee pain. I am telling you, it will fight. The, it's an anti-inflammatory. I believe it's one of the best in the world. It has absolutely changed my life. So we have a 90-day, a three-month money-back guarantee. And if you call in, you'll see an information page at the, at the end of this. <laughs> and you can dial the 800 number. That is 1-888-962-4888. Tell them Pastor Ron sent you. You'll buy a bottle and get a bottle free. Then you got a 90-day money-back guarantee if the product does not work for you and you are unsatisfied with the product, ship it back in and get your money back. But I am telling you folks, it worked for me. I lost 45 pounds, I got my eyesight back, my legs, my knees are doing fine, my back, I saw a chiropractor for arthritis in my back for 14 years, and I have not seen a chiropractor for my back or anything else in the past year since I started taking the Freezor products. So I'm telling you, it worked for me, and I know it'll work for you. And what do you have to lose? It's a money-back guarantee. So please give it, a, give it a shot. You could go to my website. You'll also see that. 
on our information page, which we'll be following after this video. But my website is team, T-E-A-M, Freezor, F-R-E-Z-Z-O-R.com forward slash Pastor Ron. Go to the website, check out the products, listen to the doctors on there, listen to the testimonies. It's a phenomenal website. Then dial the 800 number. It's 888-962-4888. Tell them Pastor Ron sent you. Buy a bottle, buy your first bottle. They'll give you a bottle free. You can't beat that. So it, it's a great way to get started. And listen, I'm, I'm here just to help you because I know that pain. I know how bad that hurts. So I, I want the best for you. Just try it and I hope it'll help you. So God bless you. And I'll be talking to you again. I pray that you'll be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Till next time, see ya.